thanks for watching and today we'll do something really neat because so far we kind of learned two major concepts one being the concept of a subspace the other one being the concept of a linear transformation and it turns out there's one beautiful topic where they're both related and that's with the concept of a graph so suppose V and W are two vector spaces, vector spaces, and T be a function from V to W. And T goes from V to W. Careful, we're not assuming yet that T is a linear transformation. And it turns out it's a linear transformation if and only if something interesting happens. And for this, let's define the graph of a linear transformation. Let's call it G, because I'm feeling very G today. Uh, G be the set of points of the form V, T of V. And that's in V cross W, where just V goes through uh, all of these. So, and the reason it's called G, it's because it's precisely the graph of this function. So think of V and W as your two axes. Then, and you have a linear transformation, which might look like that. Then, as I said, the set of points of the form V, T of V, It's precisely the graph of t, uh, just like the graph of a function. What's the graph of a function? The set of points x comma f of x, where f x goes through your domain. So this is what's called the graph of a linear transformation. And of course, it's a subset of uh, v cross w, because that's just v cross w is just a set of points where the first component is in v, the other component is in w. But again, we have not assumed yet that uh, t is li a linear transformation, but here's a very neat fact, which I'll prove today. t is a linear transformation if and only if g is not a subset of V cross W, but a subspace of V cross W. Of V cross W. Which is an amazingly beautiful uh, relationship between linear transformations and subspaces. Um, and I know my, my professor, when I took linear algebra, asked me that, and I found that well, at that point, I didn't, I was just too confused, but uh, now that I look back on it, it's a beautiful fact. Um, okay, so why is that true? Uh, it's also sort of where uh, um, math is having a weird flex or something, because it's, the proof is also very beautiful. So suppose, first of all, uh, T is a linear transformation. Then let's show it's a subspace, which means we have to show three things. The zero vector is in it, it's closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication. Well, what is the zero vector here? It's just a point, the, yeah, the point with component zero, zero. So here, zero, zero, so here the zero vector is simply zero, zero where zero here is a zero vector in V, and the zero vector other one is a zero vector in W, but the point is, if you let V equals to zero, then what is V comma T of V? Well, that is zero T of zero, and that's zero, zero, and that's because T is linear. Which means, going back, 0, 0 is of the form V, T of V, for V equals 0, so 0 is on the graph. So 0, 0, which is 0, T of 0, is in the graph. 
All right, that's one thing. And now let's show uh, close under addition. So now suppose, let's say uh, V1, T of V1 is in G and V2, T of V2 is in G, or you know, V1, V2 are in V. Then let's add them. Then V1, T of V1 plus V2, T of V2. Well, by definition of adding points, that is V1 plus V2, T of V1 plus T of V2. But because T is linear, that is V1 plus V2, T of V1 plus V2. And you see, and this is of the form, let's say V comma T of V, where V equals to V1 plus V2 which is in V because the V1 and V2 is in V. So in other words, if you add two points on the graph, we still get a point on the graph. Which, by the way, it's very weird. In, for example, if you have, let's say, two points on the parabola, right, something nonlinear, and you add them, you don't necessarily get a point on the parabola. This is something that's kind of beautiful for linear functions, like lines that go through the origin, if you add two points on that line, you still get a point on that line. All right. And lastly, scalar multiplication. So simply, uh, if v comma t of v is in g, then c times v t of v, that's c v, c t of v, that's the c v I like. So it's a good resume. So and that's C V T C of V, and that's if you want V prime T of V prime, where V prime it's C V, and that's in V. So also any multiple of that point is also on that graph, and therefore if T is linear, then G indeed is a subspace of that product space. Interesting is also the converse. How come that sub B, it being a subspace, implies that T is linear? So now suppose G is a subspace. All right, so let's show T is linear, which means um, which means all you have to show, remember this is a shortcut in showing linear transformations, you have to show that T of, let's say, V1 plus C V2 equals T of V1 plus C T of V2. All right, but now consider the following points. So take V1 T of V1 plus C V2 T of V2. Now, this is of the form v comma t of v, and that's in your graph by definition. This is of the form v comma t of v, and it's also a graph. Now, if the graph is a subspace, it means it's closed under linear combinations. So this is in the graph, which means by definition that this point v1 t of v1 plus C, V2, T of V2, is of the form V, T of V, for some V in V. But it turns out we can figure out exactly what V is, because just the definition of adding and multiplying points is you, you just add or multiply the components. So this is really V1, T of V1, plus CV2, CTV2, and that gives you component-wise V1 plus CV2, TV1 plus C, uh, TV2. And again, we can't add those things yet because we don't know if T is linear. 
But what we do know is that it equals to V T O V. So what do we get? Let's compare the components. Comparing components tells you we already know what V is. V is V1 plus C V2. On the other hand, what we get is T O V. It's T O V1 plus C T V2. Here's a beautiful thing. We know what V is. V is just V1 plus CV2. And we just plug this back in here. And what we get is T V1 plus CV2. It's simply T V1 plus C T V2. Which bang is our linear transformation requirement. So, in fact, we have shown that T is linear. So, if G is a subspace, then T is a linear transformation. And if T is a linear transformation, then G is a subspace. So, linear transformations and subspaces, they go together like yin and yang. All right. So, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.